Hey guys, it's Go from Amen14 on Legend of Mushroom, and I am going to help you with a guide on how to develop a sleeper build. So what is a sleeper build? And it is a build that essentially is more powerful than it should be. Um, your, your power rating, like mine at the top left, 12.5 million, your power rating does not actually reflect your actual strength. So people that are above you in power are likely to underestimate you, maybe in a family brawl planning situation, maybe on arena when they're trying to get more points for their rank. So there could be situations where, you know, you're able to turn the tide and create some kind of advantage for yourself or for your family with, uh, with using a sleeper build. So your main components of a sleeper build are first, you know, your, your components, right? The stats that you're building. The second one is your resource optimization. The third one is selective spending, only spending on things that can directly correlate to an immediate or a pretty rapid power increase, actual power increase, not the arbitrary stat value on the top left of my screen shown right now. And then the fourth one, you want to prioritize your strengths. So for your, if you're going Dark Lord, then you want to focus skill damage and attack. If you are going Profit, you want to focus Stun, Skill Damage, Attack, and Attack Speed. For your Plume Monarch or your Arrow God, you want to focus Attack, Attack Speed, Combo, and Combo Damage. For your Shadow Hunter, you want to focus your Attack, your Crit, your Crit Damage, and your attack speed. Now you want to throw some combo in there, but I would argue that this is more of like a burst damage class with your crit and your percentage health. You know, combo combo is more of a supplementary stat compared to the arrow god where it's a primary stat, right? Warbringer, you want to focus counter, counter damage, attack, crit, and crit damage. And then finally for your sword warrior, you want to focus counter, counter damage, and defensive stats. Global defense percentage, global HP percentage, stuff like that, right? The difference between axe and sword is that one, you know, sword is more of a longer fight. You are trying to outlast the other person, whittle them down with counter. Axe, you are trying to kind of two-shot people with counter. Uh, it's kind of the best way I can kind of describe it. Like you're, you're wanting those counters to crit, and you're wanting to just smack them out. Like they're just, yeah, that's, it's kind of a little bit more RNG. Your sword is going to be more of a consistent kind of thing. Um, I still have yet to test these things because we don't have Awakened out yet. But I personally like the Axe Warrior more right now. Feels better for story. Um, just slaps in PvP. I mean, the counter crits just slap. And I'll go ahead and showcase that near the end of the video um, against some power differentials. So why would you want to use a sleeper build? I mean, you know, you're going to get more pound, pound for pound out of your resources you spend in the game, out of the money that you spend in the game. Everything's going to be focused kind of, you know, much like, you know, shooting a gun. You want to have aim. You want to have a target in order to be effective with the tool that you have at your disposal. It's very similar to that. With your skill and your pals, you want to... Focus on your mains, and then after that, you want to supplement your other passives. So for, for ease of explanation, I'm going to use the Warbringer because that's the best that I know and keep this video kind of short. So you have your main two, your counter and your counter multiplier, and then your counter damage. Those are, you know, counter multiplier and counter damage are, are very similar. But you have something like this here where reflect 160% of basic attack damage when hit. So that's more of what I would consider a supplementary stat rather than one that is a primary stat. It's more going to supplement you after the fact. You're not going to get very well, very far rather, stacking this stat and neglecting your counter and counter damage. It's just not going to work well for you, but it supplements well in this kind of situation where I use the electric pup to supplement my counter damage. I use the toothpaste rare pet to supplement my counter percentage. 
And then after the fact, I go ahead and I throw in the chicken hood to build up a little bit more reflect. So that's kind of what you kind of want to be doing. You want with your statue, with your souls, um, with everything, you want to be making sure that you are optimizing your resources, your slots available, whatever it may be, based on what area of your character you're developing. You want to focus those on your primary two and then break down into your other more supplementary passives when, when you have you know the leeway for it. So I guess now would be a good time to go ahead and just show you what a sleeper build is like in effect. So I'm at 12.5 million power. The people above me, there's four people above me. Bulgogi at basically 15 mil. Shroom NRG at 18.6. Trogdor at almost 22 million. And Divinity, he's just he's just insane, and he's at 26 million. He we just one shots everyone. Great for him. He's crazy. And so this guy here, let's use this as an example first. He's very good. I have the standard artifact. I have the standard mount. He has the pyre breaker mount from the rush shop and the Gatling gun from the spinner event. I did beat him a few days ago, but right now he's been putting in work. I can't get him right now. It's a big difference in power. It's a big difference in, you know, utility from our artifact, utility from our mount. But I'll go ahead and, and showcase this fight here so that you can see that, you know, it's closer than what the stats... You know, if you were to look at our character pages, you wouldn't think that it's going to even be this close. And actually, I got him. So that's pretty cool. Um, that doesn't always happen because, you know, with the Axe Warrior, you're working with critical hit and you're working with critical damage. So you're getting a little bit of RNG on whether or not your counter's proc, your counter's crit. But that's pretty cool. You know, we got him today. Um, even at a 2.5 million stat difference, power difference rather and a huge artifact gap and mount gap because see i have you know the sky glider only tier five mount and the frostbite spear you know so I, there's there's nothing i haven't gotten anything from any spinner events on this game and still able to do that so i'll go ahead and showcase another one Give you a few more just to show you, you know, what the game is like using a build like this. So we will go and find Green Machine here. 14.7 million power. Gatling gun. Motorcycle, right? I mean, another artifact, mount, power gap. How's it going to go? And it's done. I mean, from the character panel, I should not be winning these fights. From looking at Arena, from looking at Family Brawl, when people are planning their positions of their members, this is the, this is the beauty of a sleeper build. I mean, that's why it's called a sleeper build, right? People underestimate you. And, and you know, you can capitalize on that advantage, you know. Um, and we'll go ahead and do one more that's kind of at what it's like to fight someone close to my power, right? So, sorry, Kiji, I'm going to use you for an example here. Kiji's a great guy. Um, but I'm going to use him as an example. He's, he's really close to my power level at 12.8 million. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and, you know, throw it on here real quick for a last little showcase. Huh, pretty good, right? I mean, you really can't complain. Uh, you know, and, and he's another kind of lower spender and he's not a bad player whatsoever. I also happen to counter him pretty heavy as warrior. Um, and, and that there are other factors, but point being that, you know, it, it's, it's not even really a close fight because I've optimized so hard on my sleeper build where people that are near my power level, they don't even have a chance. I mean, if I can take on um, people like Bulgogi, 
and you know at 15 million power with such a such a differential and in, in, in mount and artifact and and you know green machine kind of the same situation you're looking at two million plus power differences so you know the the fights that are at your power level when they're not using a sleeper build and you are look just like the fight i just had with with um with kiji for example not to say you know he's a bad player he is a really good player I do happen to counter him pretty hard and he fights me a lot more effectively when he's playing a mage because that counters the warrior. I will make another video in the future kind of talking about the combat triangle, how to work around things. Um, you know, it's all part of the process, so just kind of bear with me. We're going to focus now on the sleeper build. So, yeah, uh, to wrap this up, you know, you got, you want to... Focus the main components of your class. You want to find the stats and the passives that are your strengths, your, your highest strengths. You want to optimize that before you work on your supplementary passives, your supplementary stats. Again, the Dark Lord is skill damage and attack. The Prophet is stun, skill damage, and attack speed. Your Arrow God is attack speed, attack, combo, combo damage. If you, can, if you can put crit in any of these categories with the Dark Lord, with the Prophet, with the Arrow God, with the Shadow Hunter, throw some crit in there, throw some crit damage in there. Those are the, you know, so it's more supplementary, but those are just good values in any game, really. I would argue any game, crit and crit damage are extremely valuable if you're going for damage. So, you know, for your, for your Shadow Hunter, you want to go crit, attack, and attack speed. For your sword, you want to do counter, counter damage, and defensive stats. Your global HP, your global defense. You are not going to depend on the RNG nature of the Axe Warrior, which goes counter, counter damage, attack, crit, and crit damage. Um, you know, you you as a as a sword warrior, you're going to have more sustain. You're going to have more consistency because you're going to be like a brick wall, and you're just going to counter all day. And it's it's. I would argue that probably in the future that Sword Warrior will be better than Axe. Right now, I like Axe because of the burst nature. I mean, it just slaps right now. Martial is missing its, its main primary ability with some of its sustain. And, you know, that's just about that. You know, I think that it will peak later, and I will probably touch on that in a future video. You might even see me as Sword Warrior in the future. I started as Sword Warrior... Switched Axe, prefer Axe better for the moment. So my final thoughts, you know, um, that would be, you know, focus, focus your components, you know, your main stuff, your, your resource optimization. Don't, don't be burning your money on stuff that doesn't correlate to an immediate stat advantage. Don't be spending on things that you don't know how to use. Um, try to minimize your spending on gambling scenarios. Anything that involves a gamble, you, you know, it's, you're going to have a considerable amount of waste and, uh, and prioritize your strengths. You know, don't, don't be, uh, you know, worrying about defense very much on your arrow God. You want to do so much damage that it doesn't matter. You just want to delete your mages and you want to pray when you go against a warrior because, you know, the combat triangle, like I will touch touch on in a future video and explain what I mean by that if, you know, if need be. So what, what to expect from my channel? You know, this is my first video. So what can you expect in the future? You know, you can expect more guides. You can expect progress from my character. Um, you can expect family brawl content, um, cross server PVP content, basically anything generally in the game going on that I might want to share. I might use for guide purposes. Um, and then also I will do my best to try to include some insights from the higher spending uh, members of my server. Maybe they have, you know, um, some kind of insights that, you know, would take money to find, right? And so, you know, I, I have hopes that maybe I could get some people in the future to um, contribute on the higher end. You can see what their gameplay might be able to be like. You can see how they think, what kind of game they play. So that's kind of, you know, my general intentions for the channel. It's to help my fellow community, help you guys, 
um, share what's going on with me, you know, just kind of have fun. Uh, and, and also an easier place to kind of point, you know, if anyone needs help, um, you know, if, you know, anything, you know, I'm kind of just here to, uh, make the game a better place wherever possible. And, uh, you know, you can look forward to that. You know, I will, with every video, have full intent of making the game a better place and just having some fun.